morning as we celebrate the light, as we celebrate Christ. And uh, we just want to do these, we do these intergenerational uh, services every once in a while. And so it's directed towards all ages, all age groups. And so we want you to enjoy the service today, but we're here not just to have fun. Uh, not just to, you know, do something that just includes all ages. We're here to celebrate Jesus today. We're here to celebrate the light Amen. into a dark world. And there's a lot of darkness in our day. And I shared with Mark this morning, uh, this is a fun day for a lot of people, but it is a very, very dark day uh, for spiritists and all of those kinds of things that go on. And so that's why it's important for us as a church to pray. It's also important for us as a church to stand firm. It's also important for us as a church to celebrate the light, Jesus Christ. We don't walk in darkness. We shine the light. And so uh, it'll be an interactive service. Uh, but I pray that when you come to the end of the service, you will say, yes, indeed, we celebrated the light, Christ today. Praise God, we can do it on October 31st, and it isn't Christmas Eve. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be just a Christmas Eve service that we light candles or we have the lights across and celebrate. Don't you think it looks great today? Yeah. So this is our glow service. God lights our way. G-L-O-W. God lights our way. Next Sunday, it's that another wonderful time of the year when you get an extra hour of sleep. Clocks fall back. So just reminding you that the clocks fall back next Sunday. Hard to believe we're already in November next Sunday. And uh, also, we just want you to realize it will also be our communion, Mark. Right. Our communion, God, King of communion service. Alan told me 10 seconds before you were Oh, there you go. Very good. So it's uh, our time to meet at the Lord's table next week. Um, I was supposed to bring the DVD up with me. Pastor Mike, can you pass it to me there? Something inside that black bag. Uh, couples Retreat, I Can't Believe It, is getting closer. When we first booked it, you could stand and be that model that just holds it up if you want. Okay. <laughs> he, says it's not, part of my he says it's not happening. So um, our Couples Retreat, believe it or not, is, is November 19th to the 21st. We still have space for some. I have a flyer. I think some of them are on the bulletin board, a flyer. Uh, two sides with the schedule and how to book your room and all of that. But you need to let me know uh, if you're signing up. I would appreciate knowing that. This is the DVD material that we have selected to work through over the weekend together. Your Time Starved Marriage. How to Stay Connected at the Speed of Light. And that is by Dr. Les and Leslie Parrott. And so we're just going to work through that together. And so that's, uh, I just wanted you to be aware of that, those that have already signed up and those that might possibly sign up. Did you notice what's still on our platform? The dunk tank. The dunk tank. It's a new way of looking at it. While you do dunk, you go down and you die with Christ. That's, that's what's And happening. you come up out of the waters alive in Christ. So... It's empty right now. It will be taken down soon, probably after next Sunday. But we want to give you the opportunity to be baptized. We were only allowed to do one at a time. And so we decided that we will keep uh, disinfecting and filling that tank. Not too often that the baptismal tank gets disinfected. Uh, but we will do it as many times as we need. Uh, Jesus told us to go and make disciples, go and baptize. And so one of the first things we should do in our faith is go under the waters of baptism. And if you have not done that, I would love to hear from you. We'll do a little class. Uh, the other item I wanted to bring to your attention is I have no problem also having people stand next to the tank and say, you know, Pastor, years ago I was baptized. I was baptized at 12. I, I was baptized at 17. And I've gone far from God in my life, but I want to renew my baptismal vows before the congregation that I say yes to Jesus again. We don't put you through the water again, but you can make a recommitment 
to that which you did many, many years ago. And so we would love to do that also if that resonates uh, with you. Would you stand with me this morning for our call to worship? Kids Connection on Wednesday night has started up again, and so it was great to hear all the kids in the church last Wednesday just reminding those to spread the word about that. Uh, 6.30 on Wednesday nights, we meet here for Kids Connection, and we're studying the book of Galatians here upstairs. Turn to someone to your right and to your left and say, celebrate the light. Celebrate the light. Celebrate the light. Good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Can you say that again with me? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the service today. We're thankful that we can come into the house of the Lord today. Yes, Would Lord. you bless our worship? Would you be lifted high and exalted, Jesus? Would yes, you Lord. shine, Jesus, shine today, we pray. And may we all say when it's all said and done this morning, my, wasn't it good to be in the house of the Lord together? And all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. and amen. God bless you. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to our family service. As you can see, uh, no offense, Darren Laurie, but us older people are blessed. And some younger people <laughs> sing with us. <laughs> hey, Darren. I should sit down any time. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Stand with us, and we're going to start by singing, Shine, Jesus, Shine. <laughs> Shine. 
The next song we're going to sing is Here I Am to Worship You. Anybody want to come help? Maybe there's some big kids that want to help.
those come up on the screen, the video. Ready? Yep. You ready? Ready, Liam? <laughs> yep. Hey. We're going to do actions. Can you do actions? You watch. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Can we hear you? I, I don't think so. 
Nope. Try again. Hello. Oh. There you go. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, today we'll be singing a song called House of the Lord by Phil Wickham. And our band name is now apparently Three Rennies and a Kenny, so <laughs> hope you enjoy. Three Rennies and a Kenny. I like it. I like it a lot.
our youth leading us in worship. Because there is no such thing as only an adult Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit wants to flow in all ages, right? In all peoples. And so it's good to be in the house of the Lord today as we celebrate this glow. And uh, one of the things that we look at, that, that we looked at and we heard it in our call to worship, is the Lord is our light and our salvation. Um, we know that God is our light, even in a dark, dark world. Um, so who here is afraid of the dark? I know I am. I don't like the dark. I tend to break my baby toe, which is just not having to wear these shoes in the dark. <laughs> I've got my barefoot stocks on because I've got a broken baby toe and did it in the dark. Don't like it in the dark. Why don't we like the dark? Why are we fearful of the dark? Show me your answers. Adults, kids, we can't see. What makes you afraid of the dark? The unknown. The unknown. What's that? Yeah, that's good. Okay, Mark's given his two cents there. <laughs> Mark and I can tease each other. We love each other and we tease each other. So that's just so you know that. What else? What, what makes us afraid of the dark? Why are we afraid of the dark? We don't know who's there, what's going on, what's hidden, right? I'm going to take this off so my glasses don't keep steaming up. <clears throat> I realize I can do that now that I'm up in front. <laughs> A little slow on the uptake there today, but anyway. Um, and, and so we realize that, that dark, you know, uh, dark is something that, well, I think in a way we feel that we weren't made for the dark. Think about it. Think about when we go to spend eternity with God Almighty and His Son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, and all the saints of glory, there will no be not any more dark, there will only be light. I believe God has created us for the light. And so somehow when we're in the dark, we feel as if we're separated from God. But we know the truth is we are not. We are not fear, fearful that God has been separated from us. See, dark is actually, when things are dark, it is the absence of light. And, and that's why all of a sudden it takes one little light to dispel the darkness, doesn't it? it, it if this room was completely dark and I just lit one candle, that one candle, that one light would dispel the dark room. That's all it would take, one light to dispel the darkness. And so we realize today that God has come in his light to us, and praise God he has, and we're going to look at our first scripture today. It would help if I turn that on. There we go. And so our first scripture reading is going to be from Maggie. Maggie's going to read John 8, verse 12 for us. Yeah, just up there, honey, thanks. Thank you. So we realize that Jesus said that he is the light of the world, that he has come into the world. One of the reasons why we go back to the beginning of creation in Genesis, it was dark. And what did God say? Let there be light. And then there was light. We know that man fell from God, far from God, and men were walking in darkness, and, and, and things were terrible on the earth. And then God called Israel to himself. And they were in Egypt in slavery. And he draws them out of Egypt. And they begin to go towards the promised land. And as they're wandering in the desert. And they were in the desert a lot longer than they were supposed to be. Not because of God. But because of their disobedience. And as they're wandering in the desert. And they pitch this tent of meeting. And the Israelites are all around it. How did they know that the presence of God was there at night? Pillar of fire, right? That pillar of fire would show up in the middle of the night and light the whole camp. And so for all of God's people in that time, they knew that God's light was his presence, his provision, and his protection. That they no longer had to walk in darkness. He would guide them even in the night. Now during the day, he was a pillar of cloud, 
And at night, he was this pillar of fire that would light up their way. And then we see that Jesus came and Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am is a statement that says that's God. That's a statement that only God used. I am. That's why the seven sayings, the I am sayings from the Gospel of John are Jesus saying, I am God. Let me show you how. So Jesus is saying, I am God, who is the light of the world. And anyone in his day would have known about the light in the world. That was done during the Feast of the Tabernacles, Feast of Sukkot. And, and that's when, anyone like camping? No. Rachel just only went halfway. Because <laughs> I know that camping, you've been really suffering for Jesus these last few summers for your family. Anyone like camping? Yeah, okay. So that was the time when the Israelites would go and build a tent and they, a booth, and they would stay in that, remembering what it was like in, uh, in the desert, right? That's what camping's like for some of us being in the desert. And, and then they would do a water ceremony. But what they would also do is Israel uh, would, uh, Jerusalem would celebrate Sukkot is they would have these four great lampstands in the temple and they all had four bowls of oil and they would have a night where they would light those bowls of oil and the lampstands were so large that they lit all of Jerusalem. Did you ever see a strobe light? I've had, over the years, in the middle of the night you'll see the strobe light. It's usually about advertisement. <laughs> But see, that was a night in Jerusalem that they knew that God is our light. Look at that. Look, Jerusalem. Look. Look at the lampstands. Look how light it is tonight. We're no longer in the dark. And they would walk around and they would pick up candles and torches. And they would walk through the streets and they would sing and they would celebrate. God is our light. God shows us the way to go. And that's why we did this today. Look, we're all lit up to say God is our light. And that's when Jesus stood up and said, I am the light of the world. And that's pretty powerful when you think about it. That Jesus said, I am the light of the world. We're going to do some experimenting today. Who likes experiments? Who's our scientists? You know, I won't make you come forward. Anybody like to do experiments? I'm going to try to do this up so it's not facing somebody, because I could make you very uncomfortable, but I won't do that. <laughs> so, in our experiment today, we're going to try to see what will shine, what will the light shine through. And, and so I have, a, I have a clear folder today, and I have this black piece of paper in there. And so, who thinks that the light will shine through that? No one. Oh, you're good scientists. And so if we put that in front, is the light shining through? Man, you're a quiet bunch. No. So one of the things we need to realize is this is really our lives without God, right? These are our lives without God. We're going our own way. We're doing it our own way. We're living in the dark, far from God. And one day we realize that Jesus died for us. He took the dark on himself, so I don't have to live in the dark. And so when I, when I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, he has forgiven me my sins. Right? We talk about that. He has forgiven me those dark things in my life. Paul said the things I didn't want to do, I did. <laughs> and the things I wanted to do, I couldn't do. That's really our life without Christ. And so, how much of the light is shining through this now? Do you see it? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Well, we believe that God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. This now, my life is in Jesus. I love the Lord. He loves me. Things are going great. But... Once in a while, I notice there's some things in there. If Jesus came today, I wouldn't be proud of. <laughs> because I've gotten angry when I shouldn't have. 
I, I've told lies when I should have spoken the truth. I, I've looked into my heart and into my life, and I begin to realize there are things in there that I would love for God to help me to get rid of. And yet, I just keep trying to push them down. And so his light does shine, but not like it could. This is what we call in the Church of the Nazarene sanctification. This is what we call in the Church of the Nazarene being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the cleansing that God wants to do in our hearts. Oh, we can love the Lord. We love the Lord and the Lord loves us. But there are things in our lives that we have not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so in the moment, what we do is we get on our knees and we pray again and we say, Lord, forgive me of these things in my life that are not Christ-like. And I've tried to push them down. I keep trying to push them down. And once in a while, I've worked really hard and I keep working harder and harder. But they just keep popping up in my life. And it's probably in the times I don't want them to. What am I to do? Paul said, oh, what a wretched man as I, that I am. <laughs> Look at me. That's, that's, that's the Apostle Paul saying that. We talked about Eve and last week and other, Peter. When, when, when G, uh, Peter said, Lord, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. Don't come to me. Don't call me to be a, dis, a disciple and apostle. I'm a sinful man. And so we know that we can see, even in the Gospels, when we read about the disciples, they really messed up quite a bit. And we as believers can mess up too. And that's okay. Because scripture tells us, if we sin, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer, is what the Bible is saying. We have someone we can go to, and his name is Jesus Christ, and he forgives us again of our sins. And so our daily walk with the Lord is constantly asking the Lord to forgive us. But there is an empowerment of the Holy Spirit. There is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is Jesus didn't just die on the cross to forgive you of your sins. Jesus died on the cross to impart himself in you that you can live a godly life that would please God. Amen? Amen? That's what we believe. That's why we sing that great old hymn, Victory in Jesus. That's why there's joy in the house of the Lord. Because it's not just that my sins are forgiven, but I've been cleansed. I've been set free. And the things I used to do, I no longer do. And now I do things to please God. And so there is that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that moment when we say, Lord, cleanse me, renew me, make me clean, take away all of it. Now, there are times where if we're not careful, it will show up again, and all we have to do is ask for a fresh infilling and cleansing. Baptism is a symbol of that cleansing. That I went down into the waters, and I sin has been washed away, hallelujah. And I no longer live for myself, but I live for Jesus, the light of the world. And guess what? When I live for Jesus and I'm totally cleansed, what happens with the light? Shine through. It can shine through for others to see. Jesus brings light into our dark souls. So that the light of Christ can shine through. And so I'm going to ask, we need four teams to help us. We always get a little bit of hand-on help. Not too complicated. We're going to make a lantern to put a light in so others can see. And we're going to, you're going to be able to, those teams that come up and help, you're going to be able to take this home. And you're going to be able to shine that out today somewhere in a window in your home. And it says, we are the light of the world, and we're going to shine that. So I need four teams. Don't move so slow, very quickly. Four teams, come forward and help, please. Who's going to help? You need to be at either end of the table. We're going to make lanterns. Oh, that's a good granddad right there. Floyd? Okay, we're going to have, Floyd, if you want to come over to this one with your granddaughters, yeah, okay. We need one more team on the end to help us. Yeah, well, either way, you can go down the far end if you want, it's what, what other end you want. We're just trying to socially distance, okay. And okay, there we go. And we still got some Rennies and a Kenny there, and a few others. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to make these lanterns. We're celebrating the light. So the, the first thing you want to do is you want to open up, get someone to open up your sand, and you're going to pour that in. I have one here I'm going to make with you. We're going to pour this gold sand. We're hoping that it will spark a little bit for people to see, right? And you're going to want to level that out a bit. Okay, I'm going to level that out a bit. And then now you're going to take your candle and you're going to light it. Turn it on. And you're going to drop it. Whoever's got a nice small hand, I don't. Mine's just going to get dropped to the bottom. And you might, if you've got a small enough hand, you might want to turn to put it right in the middle. Very good. How are we doing? Good? Okay. And then in this bag, in this bag are all little fall things and sparkly hearts. And you can open up that bag and you can start putting them in around your candle. So that they help it to glow and sparkle, right? I don't mind. Uh. <coughs> okay, that's going to help you. Do you think those I think those hearts kind of help a bit, eh? To make it sparkle a bit? Do you think? What do you think, Martina? Do they sparkle a bit more because of those shiny hearts in there? Yeah, maybe hold it up because the people at the back can't see how far you've come. You can hold that up for people to see. Okay, now just so that your jar looks a little bit nicer, we've got a little bit of burlap we're going to put around the top, the rim of the jar. That way your mom will want to pull it out every year. <laughs> if it looks nicer. <laughs> so we're going to put that bit of burlap sticky tape, whatever you want to call it, around the top. You got it around the top of the jar, or is it down somewhere else? Who's cut her hair? Huh? Who's cut her hair? Oh shoot, that's not good. Not good at all. Okay. How are we doing? Okay, so now you're going to take your reminder that you're going to put on that jar, because if somebody sees that jar in your house, and especially tonight, you can shine it in your window. I'm going to take mine and shine it in the manse's front window. You guys, if you're driving by, you can see it's there. And our tag says, we are the light of the world. And you're going to tie that onto that, just so, and onto the side maybe more, so that you can still see the candle. Okay? Short, is it? I was the one that cut it. I might have cut it too short. You okay? You'll get her? Okay, very good. So now maybe you want to hold them up and let everybody see what you've made. And those are yours to take home. Those are yours to take home. You can put them on the table and you can come and get them at the end of the service. We're going to leave them on that table. Just leave them and let the light shine. Put the cross forward for people to see the cross. Yeah, good job. Awesome. Awesome. Great. You may be seated. And so Corinne is going to come and read our second scripture. I'm impressed, boy. We're going to have a craft night. We'll have you come. So our second scripture, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but, oh, but on a candlestick. 
and it giveth life unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you would say to me, well, wait a minute, Pastor Betty. You had me put on this lantern. We are the light of the world. So what's that about? We talked about God being this pillar of fire. The God said in Genesis it was dark, and he said in that moment, let there be light, and there was light. We know that in the end, when all is said and done, and we go to be with Jesus in his new kingdom, there will no longer be dark, and it will be light. So I understand all that, but what is this? We are the light of the world. No, 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 Jesus is the light of the world. But see, Jesus says that he knew he was returning back to the Father, and so he said, we're now to be the light of the world. Now, I will turn that up so that doesn't bother you. You laugh at me, but I've been into a dark basement trying to get a, a sump pump to work, and this is what helped. And it works. For those that go out camping, and like camping, they really come in handy. I know it looks wonderful. Doesn't it look wonderful? Um, but you know what? Jesus doesn't care. Because ultimately, if I've had the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, I know Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and I've had the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, now I become the bearer of his light. So it's no longer just God's pillar of fire. It is no longer just lamps lit on a lampstand once, once a year. It is no longer Jesus that is the light. He has now put his light in each one of us. And we now have become God's light. I'm going to ask the worship team to come. We're going to sing this wonderful song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I just have this closing story. We're going to ask for Anthony if he would trim all the lights for us. Uh, we could leave those on the platform at this point so they can see. But if we want to dim all the lights off. Uh, I was in San Antonio, Texas in 1997 for the General Assembly. It was the mission convention. It was the opening service. And it was always seen as one of the best services. You can bring them down completely, please. It was always seen as one of the best services. And uh, it was a mission service, and, the, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the service, everything went dark. You couldn't see a thing in the Alamo Dome. Thousands of us gathered, the Church of the Nazarene, from around the globe. And what was interesting was all of a sudden, these crosses, these lit crosses, were all over the stadium. And then they told us that those were missionaries who were now retiring, and they had shone Christ's light for years and decades in other parts of the world. And in this mission convention were all these lit crosses. And then you could see these lit crosses moving, and they were moving down to the front of, the, uh, of that big stadium where the platform was. And the missionaries came down to the front, and they held up their cross for Christ, lit for all to see. Then they made a peel that night, and they said, okay, who would like to pick up these crosses? Who would feel called to be the light of Christ in the dark world? Who would be called to go to the mission field even and carry the cross for Christ? And then it was amazing because we began to see this move across the stadium of all kinds of people, young people, older people from all different countries, come down and they stood next to the missionary and the missionary put his arm or her arm around them and they picked up the cross of Christ. Wow, what a service. I still remember it back in 1997. The thing that amazed me though was San Antonio is a beautiful city and there's a river walk that you can walk at night. Service was over. Everybody was amazed by how God moved and, and we were all talking about it. All of a sudden through the dark streets of San Antonio, you would see a lit cross being carried by a young person walking through the streets. And somebody would say, what's that all about? Why are you carrying a cross? And they would share, well, tonight I went forward and I want the light of Christ to shine in me. I want to go wherever God would call me to go and shine his light. And then all throughout the evening, the light of Christ 
would just pop up all over the place. And it just touched my heart. Every time I see a lit cross, it reminds me of that service that night. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to pray. I pray that you're a person tonight, today that would want the light of Christ to shine in your heart and life. Do you know Christ today as your personal Lord and Savior? That's where it starts. Have you had the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit that has cleansed you up of those things that you would be ashamed of if others knew? And so we pray today, Lord Jesus, come. You know, you are the searcher of all hearts. You know all of us. You know if there are things in our lives that are bringing dishonor to your name. You know of our speech, if there's anger, resentment, unforgiveness, those things, Lord, that as we're going out into West Prince and trying to shine our light for others, as we're going into schools and daycares and as we're going into work and on the uh, uh, harvesting or whatever it might be, Lord, you want others to see Jesus in us, the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. We pray today for our family members, our brothers and sisters, uh, uh, those that we know in our community, our friends that are in a very dark place today. Lord Jesus, would you help us to shine your light by praying for them, by going alongside of them and encouraging them, maybe doing something very practical for them, whether it would be to bake some cookies or to write a little card or whatever it might be. Help us, Lord, to shine your light yes. in this dark world until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let's sing this song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to ask all the children if you would go out and help Rachel with something. Any of the children, if you want to just go out, she's going to help you with something. All the children go back to see Rachel at the back. Great. I pray this is your prayer. This is the light of mine.
services, one of the things we've done in the past that we felt was very, very important is to give some practical outflowing of this into the community. And so we usually give people a mission project and we have five of these. Now, was it the helper that we said was going to no, do these? Okay, but I think people want to see what's in here. Sure. Yeah. And so there's a candle in there and there's a scripture, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. And so in that, we're wanting you, and so, you know, we were very proactive because we realize if you took this as a mission, you'd give it to your wife. There you go, Dara. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> oh, you're a big spender, you are, Mark. <laughs> or you'd give it to your grandma. But so we felt we wanted to make sure there's some people in our church who haven't been out to church that we just thought it'd be nice to have people who would take this mission sometime today, if not today, tomorrow, and bring that little gift on behalf of the church to their door. And it's more important that you've seen them and you said, hello, we're thinking of you, and we miss you, and we pray for you. So I have ten of these here, and I'm needing, before we do the benediction, I'm needing... Ten people or ten families to come up and grab a bag and the mission. Don't just all wait. I'm not doing the benediction until all ten are gone. <laughs> the quicker you'll be here for a while. Yeah, that's that's the actual person and their phone number and address that you're delivering it to. Okay. Four more there. Two more there. Oh. Yeah, one more. Who's going to take it? This is our opportunity. We just said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Here's your opportunity to shine the light of Christ, to take it to someone out in the community. I've heard, the reason why we continue to do this is because people have said they've had God moments when they've done this. When they've gone to that door, they've got to know more people in our church family. They've got to be the light of Christ. One more left. Anyone want to jump at it? Don't all jump at once. Yeah. Way to go. Thank you. Way to go, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Perfect. And if you need help with that, we'll help you out with it. Okay? Good. So, here's your mission. All of our mission now, as you receive today the benediction. Was it good to be in the house of the Lord today? God. Amen. Amen. Are you going to go forth and shine his light? Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to us, and you already heard it today, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. May you go forth and shine his light. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Thank you.